Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about and implementing stacks. Uh, in our case, we're going to be using C, but uh, theoretically you could use any language you want for this. Um, so a stack is a basic data type that allows you to store a series of items and it supports two different basic operations, pushing onto the stack and popping off of the stack where pushing means you take a value and you put it on the top of the stack. And when you want a value back, you pop off the stack, which will take the top value and give you it. So you could say it works similarly to a plate stack in a restaurant or in your kitchen, where if you clean one plate, you put it on the top. And when you then go to use a plate, you take a plate off the top. You don't generally take a plate from the bottom or the middle, you take it from the top. So, um, as I said, in our case, we'll be using C to implement this. So I have set up a make file. Uh, I will be including the make file in the description because this isn't really about uh, using make files or writing them. But if we look in the make file, we'll be having two different files here. We'll have stack.c and stack.test. And of course, we'll also have the header file for our stack.c there. So let's create our files real quick. We'll start by creating the stack.h file, our header file. And the first thing we'll do in here, um, since we are, I already know some of the things we'll need here, um, we'll be writing in, we'll be including the standard bool.h there, as well as the standard library. There we go and leaving a space at the bottom of the file there. And so in um, in our header file, we will also be defining our type def for the actual type we'll be using or the struct we'll be using. Uh, so we'll be using struct stack and we'll call it stack uh, c stack t. There we go. Uh, so this is what we'll actually be referring to our stack as. Uh, the reason I prefixed it with C here is because um, there's already actually an implementation of a stack or something called a stack uh, in, I believe, the standard library. Uh, so it conflicts with it. Or it otherwise conflicts with it somehow. Uh, yeah. So as I said, we'll be support a stack will support uh, two different basic operations, which will be pushing onto the stack and popping off of it. But we'll also be supporting getting the size of the stack and checking if the stack is empty in our implementation. However, before any of that, we of course need a, the ability to create and remove a stack from memory. So um, we'll be implementing those functions first. So we'll have a function that's just uh, c stack t it returns a pointer to it which we'll just be calling stack create we'll also have a stack destroy which we'll take in a c stack t we'll just call it stack and then we'll also be having our basic operations um, we'll make a stack push, which will take a C stack T as well as a, now, as you can see here, um, generally in most simple implementations of it, you'd probably just want to use an int or something. But in our case, we're going to make something that can store any value and just to not complicate it too much for this will simply be storing pointers, so any type. So you'll have to keep track of what you're actually storing in there so you don't mix different data types in the pointers unless you know exactly what you're doing. But generally, we'll just store any type of pointers. You can store a pointer to an int or an entire string or whatever in this stack. Um, and then we'll have the stack pop function, uh, which will return a boolean, actually. Be 
because we'll um, we we'll want to make sure that we're actually able to pop something off the stack because if it's empty then we can't do that and uh, we don't want to directly return the result in the case that it's empty because then presumably we'd be returning null but it should also be possible to store a null pointer in the stack that is a possible value to store I suppose and thus we'll be simply returning true for a successful um, a successful uh, popping and it falls if it's unsuccessful and uh, make sure that the result is a double pointer since what we store is a pointer and we'll want to supply it with a pointer that we then assign to the correct place and the next thing we'll create here is stack empty which will just take in a constant c stack t stack I will just tell us if it's empty or not. And last but not least, we have a size t stack size, which also takes in a constant c stack t stack. There we go. Um, normally you, you would make sure to comment this, but for right now, this will be fine. <laughs> All right, so this is our basic header file uh, in this. So we'll just create a stack.c where the first thing we do is include our header file. There you go. All right, and in here we'll be implementing all of these, but first of all, We'll just have uh, we'll just structure it up a little bit here. Oop. There we go. So in our type depths, we'll actually be adding an extra type depth that's very just local to inside of the stack uh, because we're actually using a uh, our implementation of a stack will be using a linked list uh, because we'll be in later videos uh, I'll be working with other data types and we'll be working our way to creating a linked list and so on um, so using a linked list in this one will make all of it more familiar the full way also it's probably one of the simplest ways in my view of actually implementing the stack so we'll actually be implementing something called a frame. You've probably, um, if you've programmed, programmed a lot in C before, you've prob you're probably familiar with uh, the, <laughs> the stack used in, like the stack in memory that we use when calling like recursive functions and all that and, you know, stack frames and all that. So we're used to using the same terminology here where each thing we store in the stack is a frame. And it would look something like this because now we're going to be implementing the actual struct for the frame here. And it will just store a frame t pointer that we'll call next and a void pointer that we'll call value. Simple. And then we'll be storing a, uh, or creating our actual stack struct here, which will be storing a frame t first. Uh, just like calling it that because it's the first in the series. You could call it. Um, you could call it top. You could call it uh, anything you want. <laughs> But first just makes sense because it's the first one in the linked series we'll be storing. And also a size t size, which will just contain the size of our entire stack. As for function prototypes, um, just from looking at this, we can tell that we'll need at least two functions uh, that are purely local to the C file and aren't defined out here. So we may as well just 
write the prototypes for them here at the top. And they're going to be the frame T. Make sure that it's a pointer. Frame create. Oops. Which will take in a void pointer value and a frame T next. And we'll also need a void frame. Oh, a void frame destroy. Just taking in a frame T frame as parameter. And in our case, because um, what we'll want to do is, of course, uh, there's something important to think about here, and that's how, because we're storing void pointers here, or pointer to anything, it could be in, in whatever, that needs to be mallocked on the heap when you were actually, when the user is actually using the stack. They'll need to be allocating memory for the thing they're storing. And if they emptied the stack before they, uh, before they destroyed it, we'd be fine just having the frame destroy only destroy the actual frame and not touching the value. But it's possible that they'll destroy the stack before it's actually empty, and then we'll just be destroying all the frames, but leaving the pointer or the value or place of memory that this pointer points to intact, causing a memory leak. So we may also need another function here called void frame destroy keep value because we want our actual frame destroy to destroy everything in the frame. We'll destroy the frame and its value, which also just takes in a frame T frame, by the way. All right, so we can begin by just creating these. Um, they don't actually need to be prototypes since we're actually going to be, or we don't actually need the prototypes for it since we'll actually be storing them right here. Um, or we'll actually have them at the top, so everything will be able to reach them. But it's, it just looks like nice and neat having them up there. So we'll start with frame T, frame create, where we will be creating our frame. Of course, takes in void pointer to our value and our frame T that's stored next to it. And this one is really simple. We'll just create a new frame T frame, which is just R, which just allocates the size of a single frame in memory. Uh, the reason I use calc is so that it actually clears everything when it's in memory, although it's a, maybe a bit unnecessary at the moment since we'll be also be just be doing this uh, we'll be inserting our value right here and we'll be inserting our next right here although this one in this case it may matter a little bit and just return frame so yeah maybe using calc here isn't actually necessary but it's just that I feel it's good practice to just use that anytime you can over malloc so that we always clear it. All right, and next up, we'll be writing our frame destroy method or function, which will just take in our frame and we'll free it, but we'll start by freeing the value. And then we will free the frame itself. There we go. That should give us all of our memory back. Next up, we write the other destruction, a destructor for it, which will just call the frame destroy keep value. Of course, also takes in a frame, in which case we just free the frame itself but we keep the actual value it points to intact. All right, so now we can start creating the, 
or writing the functions for our function prototypes here in the header. Uh, so first up we have stack t stack create. Let's see. Oh, there we go. I did it. <laughs> I missed the C there. Um, yeah, this one is as simple as the other one. Just C stack T stack is equal to calc one size of C stack T because we just want to allocate that much memory. And that is basically it, but I know that calc already clears it, but I like to just, just in case. There we go. And then we simply return our pointer and our stack should be created. And then next up, we'll be writing the stack destroy. This one gets a little bit more interesting because it's actually going to need to handle a few different cases. And it takes in a C stack T pointer to our stack, which we then proceed to destroy. All right, so uh, there are a few different scenarios that could happen here. You could get in uh, as input an empty stack or a stack with content in it. Most efficiently, we'd want to make sure that if it's empty, we just remove the stack. So in any case, whatever we do, whenever we run this function, we want to simply free the stack. And after we free something, we want to just set the pointer here to null. There we go. But that only actually covers the entire thing we're doing if it's empty. If it's not empty, we actually need to do a little bit extra work and we'll just write if not stack empty stack. We want to do the following. We will want to actually go over all of the elements in the linked series that we store in our stack and free all of them. So to do that, um, I just like to do this. I'll just create a uh, frame D pointer here that I'll call cursor, which I will set equal to the first item in the stack. And then using a while loop, we can just say, so while the cursor is not null, and the reason we're uh, putting this inside of our an if statement here is just, it's unnecessary to create the cursor and pointer and just put all that on the, the stack, so to speak. If we already know it's empty, we may as well just go ahead and free it instantly and not bother doing all of this. So while the cursor is not null, we'll just create another frame T, we'll just call temp, set that to cursor, and then we will make cursor move forward to the next uh, link in the line. And then we simply say that we want to destroy the frame temp actually yeah uh, here we go we also want to of course set frame is equal to null in frame destroy keep value as well as set frame value equal to null and set frame equal to null in our uh, frame destroy function up here. All right, so this should then go through the entire stack and destroy every single item in there or frame in there. All right, now we move on to our, the actual operations that our stack supports. So the operation that supports 
that it should support for any stack is push and pop as we've covered, but also our two extra methods it supports that are uh, uh, empty and size. But let's start with push. So we have a void function there called stack push that just takes in our stack as well as our value that we want to push onto the stack. Now, this is actually a very simple one. All we have to really do is just say, okay, put this at the top. So, well, <laughs> regardless of how, what the actual stack looks like, it's the same operation in any case. Um, we simply do this, we say stack first is equal to frame create value and stack first. So this will set our, this will change the value of the first pointer here to our, a new frame that points to the old value of our uh, the first pointer and contains our value here. Essentially pushing the other the other value if it exists back and putting something on top like putting a plate on a stack of plates. After that we will want to increment the size. I actually like to put the do a pre-incrementation there. And that is essentially it. And when we've done that, we simply write our next function here, which will be bool stack pop. And this one also, as all of the other ones, takes in a c stack t, our stack. But this one has a double pointer that is just results. What you want to do here then is we want to take the value that's in the first pointer inside of our stack and set our result to that and then return true as long as that exists. But that means that first of all, we want to make sure that our stack isn't empty. So if stack empty stack, we would just want to return false then we don't actually care at all what happens to the result here because when you're writing the program, you should always just check. Basically, anytime you call stack pop, you do it inside of a, uh, a conditional. So any type of condition it could be an if statement or say a while loop or something like that. And assuming we return false, we just ignore the result variable here. Otherwise though, if it's not false and we return true, we want to set result is equal to stack first value. And of course, we want to set the value of the, since this is a double pointer, we want to set the, set the pointer it is pointing to, to point to the value right here so that we effectively just change the pointer that it, this result pointer is pointing to. It gets a bit confusing there, but yeah, <laughs> that's pointers for you. And then we will want to remove that from the stack, which means that we want to set our frame, create a frame T here that we sent to stack first. Uh, we'll call this one temp. There we go. And we'll want to set our stack first is equal to temp next. So regardless of if it's null or if it has a value, it doesn't matter, it works that way. And then we want to frame destroy keep value on our temp here. Effectively, we've now 
taken the plate off of the stack, but or taken the frame off of the stack, and we've returned its value using result here. And then we simply just return true. All right. So the next function after that is, of course, the bool stack empty, which takes in a seed stack t. Uh, of course, it takes in a constant c stack t because we're not doing anything to it stack and we're just returning so uh, in this case we could check if the size is zero but i don't generally want to trust that so we'll simply just say okay return stack first is equal to null because if it's null then it's empty And last but not least, we get the size. Uh, there you go. Which just returns the size. Oof, almost forgot here. Of course, when we, when we pop off our stack, we also want to reduce the size. So I'll just do a pre decrementation there. There we go. Now, theoretically, this is a fully working stack, albeit a bit questionable uh, how it's actually, what it actually stores, since it stores our pointers instead. And there are safer ways to handle values in linked lists and such. But for purpose of Making it a bit short, we're not going to cover that really here. doesn't really matter. All right. Now our next file we need, of course, is stack test.c, uh, which is a very simple file. We're just going to include our stack.h. And we're going to just write a main function in here that just creates our stack and does uh, some like very simple operations. We're not even really testing all of them. We're all of our functions. We're just testing that the stack actually works. So this is how you would generally go about using the stack we've just implemented. We would just write a stack T. Let's call it test is equal to, uh, of course not stack creates. Ah, that's me. I have um, <laughs> I have an impulse to always allocate <laughs> when I write something. Obviously, we've already written a function that allocates it for us. Oh, I keep <laughs> doing that too. Of course, it's our C stack T since uh, as uh, this shows that there's a little bit of a conflict here because it's uh. It might be a very specific uh, Mac OS thing, but yeah, we want to make sure not to do that. And on top of this, we'll actually also create two end pointers here. So we have, uh, uh, actually I'll just value one. <laughs> this one we're actually gonna call calicon one size of int. And then we'll have a second one. There you go. And we'll just set a uh, value one is equal to funny binary numbers, 81, 92. And value two will set to minus 40, 96. Oop. There we go. Uh, next up here, we'll just insert those into test. So this lets us use stack push. And we'll do test stack and value one. And then we use stack push again, or test stack and value two. Theoretically, we could push it on multiple times, but uh, need to watch out then because if we're destroying it, with multiple references to the same location in memory, 
that's not going to be fun and we don't want to do that all right so to test it all we're going to do is pop off the stack here so we'll just say for int i is equal to zero i less than free we'll say and i plus plus because that will test our that it works correctly and in here we'll simply say um if stack pop oop, see stack nope uh, stack pop stack no it's called test <laughs> and of course we need a result variable for that we'll just define a void here result is equal to null just initialize it as a pointer to null and we'll send in note that since it's a double pointer I'm sending in a the address of our result variable here or result pointer and in here we'll use use a print f which of course means we need to include stdlib.h no std standard io .h there you go And in here we just say popped percentage d of the stack backslash no nope, that's not do that backslash n and our value will for d there will be a d reference for an int pointer we'll can just cast it to an int pointer since that's what we're storing and this is essentially how you would use it when you want to use the specific type of value that you're storing in it. Uh, this is what part of why it's a sort of a bad implementation, but it gets the point through and you could easily change this to just store ints or whatever you want. But for result, uh, this just sim simply makes it like a, a basic general, general purpose version of a stack. I mean, it's C, so you'd be keeping track of a lot of things anyway, so why not keep track of this as well? But also here, uh, in the case that it isn't successful in popping something out of the stack, we'll simply say stack, stack is empty, because that's the only case that it's going to return false. All right. Now, um, Here's the thing, as you can see in here, we haven't actually destroyed or uh, freed the memory that we allocated up here. And that's actually for a good reason because we're not actually going to test that part of it. We're actually going to push these two values onto the stack again. I'll actually just copy this. There we go. Push them on again. They're gonna be intact because our stack doesn't destroy them otherwise this wouldn't work so then down here we'll simply run stack destroy test which will then destroy all our all the values it stores as well all right um, let's try to run this then so we simply use our make file and we write make stacks all right, very nice. And then we simply just try to run it. Let's see what's happen. Let's see what happens. Oh. <laughs> well, that's pretty typical. So <laughs> let's check what that could be. Um, it's not very descriptive, so we'll have to look around a little bit. Um, I guess the most obvious would be to look in the push and pop, but I don't see anything weird. We're simply when we push, we just set the first one there and set that to the point B. Yeah, it should work. We just increment the size. And then we just take the result from the value and we simply destroy but keep the value there. Okay, so it's not there. Then it's possible that it's done when we allocate. Creating the stack looks fine. Maybe creating the frame. Oh, yeah, there we go. When we're setting next, we can't set that to value. I hope everyone caught that. So there we go. And 
that should work. <laughs> All right, let's try it now. Let's see here. We simply just do make stacks and then we try to run stacks again. There we go. Okay. So that's what we expect since our value two is minus 496 and value one is 8192. We first push value one on, and that means that when we push value two on, we expect to get value two out first, which we do. We pop that off the stack. And then the next time we pop off the stack, we get 8192, since that's the value left there on the top. And on the third try, it's empty. All right. Very nice. So then it comes to the dreaded part of any C programming project, leak checking. Um, so once again, in the provided make file, I, um, it's as the, by default, it's set up to run on Mac. Uh, which uses the, uh, so we use the leaks tool, but I've included um, alternatives to our mem flags here. You can just comment this out and then uh, undo that comment, as well as comment this out and undo this comment right here. If you want to run with Valgrind, it should work. Uh, I haven't tested it since Valgren doesn't work on my computer here, but it should work. Otherwise, um, we'll have to fix that. But anyway, yes. So in order to run our memory test, we just type stacks mem, but that requires us to build it first, but which we've already done, but let's do it, do it again just to be absolutely sure. But as you can see, it's up to date. All right, so we just type make stacks mem there we go all right and it looks like there's zero leaks very nice that means that everything that's allocated is deallocated however we could see that if we did just simply we just did this we just don't do that here we go and then we build stacks and run stacks mem. We can see that we're getting leaks. And this is predicted behavior because uh, when we pop off the stack, as I've talked about earlier, we're not freeing the memory and the pointers that we store. And thus they need to be freed elsewhere. So we need to do free value one and free value two here which would have the exact same effect if we make stacks again and then run stacks mem. It has the exact same effect as just if they're left on the stack. But of course, if we're doing it the way we're doing it here, where we're actually popping off the stack and the stack is empty, we would just use free and we wouldn't pop onto the stack again. That would just be unnecessary. So that essentially concludes it. But before I completely con conclude the video, I would probably like to talk about that there's one more operation that is not actually a standard operation for stacks, but that's often supported by stacks. It's the peak uh, function that just lets you take a look at the top element of a stack so you can get the value without actually popping from the stack. Um, we've I've chosen to not implement it here because it's technically redundant. Uh, it Peak would technically be faster for that operation, but if you wanted to do that, you could simply pop a value off the stack and then push it back on again and it would have the exact same effect. It would be as if it never left. But yeah, that's essentially it. Um, in future videos, we'll be looking at... Um, linked lists, of course, which is something we technically did create today, but we've specialized it to support only stack operations, as well as queues and other data types. Uh, this series isn't necessarily limited to C, it's just we're going to be using C a lot because it, it allows us to uh, work with the nitty gritty memory stuff and uh, it, sometimes avoiding using classes and object orientation can make it easier to understand abstract data structures, but uh, there is a big chance that certain types of data structures we're actually going to be creating 
later on recreating in object-oriented languages, something like C++ or C Sharp. But having the perspective from a fun or, or a, an imperative, purely imperative language perspective could be useful. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, I will see you then.